Uh, I'm going to talk about what's happening at the U.S. southern border right now. Some of this is in the news uh, with respect to separation of children, but there's uh, from their parent, but there's been a lot more that's been going on uh, over the course of the of the uh, Trump administration. Some of this, quite honestly, began under the watch of the Obama administration when there was a surge of unaccompanied minors that entered in 2014, 2015. Um, that got some publicity, but what didn't get publicity was there were also a surge of, of women and children fleeing largely domestic violence from Central America. And in response to that surge, um, quite disappointingly, the Obama administration actually opened family detention centers, uh, a couple of large ones that still exist. Uh, um, and there's a couple of other ones. Well, uh, that are focused primarily on this group. Um, after Donald Trump got elected, this got crazy. And uh, so what we see prior to the pandemic was a, a series of attempts to essentially foreclose and end asylum as we know it today. Uh, again, uh, there have been... Uh, Probably by this point over the last four years, um, a rough estimate is at least two to 300,000 folks that have fled, uh, not only Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador, but also certain parts of Mexico as well that are seeking asylum. Uh, and the types of things that the Trump administration has, in, has implemented um, range from something uh, incorrectly named the Migrant Protection Protocol or Remain in Mexico policy, which requires people that approach the border and who want to apply for asylum, it requires them to, to remain in Mexico. Uh, along with that, there's been a policy of foreclosing asylum for people who have entered, uh, who have traveled to the southern border, but crossed through a third country. Uh, and uh, so anyone, of course, traveling by land from the Northern Triangle have traveled through Mexico. And so there's something called the third country bar that requires people to apply for asylum and demonstrate that they've been denied in a third country before they get to apply in the United States. Uh, the United, uh, Trump has also strong armed uh, Mexico, um, Guatemala and Honduras and El Salvador into signing uh, documents called ACAs, Asylum Cooperation Agreements, that require those countries that are known for being uh, places where there's extreme violence to accept applicants for asylum. Um, uh, in addition to that, the, the Trump administration has said that if people try to cross the border illegally, that uh, that they've got to remain in detention during the pendency of their asylum claim. Now that was all pre-COVID and that continues today, but uh, beginning in March uh, under the cover of COVID-19, the Trump administration uh, instituted essentially a permanent ban for anyone trying to come to the United States to apply for asylum. And uh, that policy has been chastised roundly by, uh, by uh, uh, healthcare experts who understand what's at stake for individuals who are applying for asylum. And they've complained, healthcare experts have complained to the uh, Trump administration that there actually is not a need to close the border to asylum seekers, that you can handle them in a compassionate way by handling any group that's traveling or individuals that are traveling when at, during the time of a potential pandemic. You screen them, you treat them, you uh, provide them shelter in safe places rather than relegate them to dangerous shelters and other living conditions in places like Tijuana or Nogales or Motomoros in Mexico and where the pandemic can only get worse. Uh, they, they view the excuse of the pandemic as, uh, as nothing but a pretext for foreclosing asylum. And, uh, and so uh, 
we're pleased, immigrant rights advocates are pleased that, uh, that uh, healthcare rights advocates have also joined us in complaining. So uh, uh, my students and I successfully petitioned the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights for a thematic hearing two months ago on these issues. And the commission is outraged that what at the evidence that we introduce as to the human rights violations that are occurring at the southern border. And incidentally, our complaint was filed not just against the United States, but also Mexico for being complicit in these, uh, these terrible uh, issues uh, related to foreclosing asylum to legitimate asylum seekers. And uh, we anticipate that the report condemning the United States and Mexico will be issued at the beginning of the year uh, that outlines the tragedy that has occurred and the deaths and the illness and the violence that has been perpetuated at the U.S. southern border uh, by the Trump administration and the, uh, and the government of Mexico. Our hope, of course, is that the Biden administration live true to what it has outlined, at least on its website, in terms of its, its plans to end migration protection protocols, to end family detention, uh, to handle the pandemic situation uh, at the border in a more reasonable, humane way. And uh, mm -hmm. time will tell, but we know that we have to continue putting pressure on the Trump, uh, not just Trump, but on the incoming Biden team to make sure that they live up to the spirit of the words that they've outlined. And, um, and we're, we're somewhat hopeful, but the damage has been done and it's going to take a long time to remedy what has occurred. Thank you.